So you like new Pokemon, huh? Well, now that Pokemon Journeys and Aim to be a Pokemon Master is wrapped up, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is out and we're awaiting DLC, I thought it was a perfect time to finalize and showcase the full Neos Region Pokedex alongside showcasing the official in-game like map of the Neos Region. I know some of you have been waiting for Neos content and thank you for being so patient. So be sure to share this video and subscribe if you're new. As after this video, I'll be showcasing all the gym leaders and their full teams within the region. And as we go along, be sure to comment your full team down below. I'm curious to know what your Pokemon team for this region will be. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into it. First off, the Neos region. Influenced by Rome, France, and references from Black Clover, a shonen anime which deals with elemental magic, elves, samurais, and more. I highly recommend it. There is no single influence followed from my region, which allows me to be more free with the Pokemon I want instead of what I need for the region based on the area. Though your adventure begins after you submit your application from your home in Onset Town, a quaint and quiet little village inspired by Hodge of the Clover Kingdom. Onset Town gives you three paths to new areas when leaving, one being for Alicia Forest, another for Lake Vamp, and most importantly, Route 1, which will connect you to Sauce Town. Sauce Town is the location of Professor Sappin's Pokemon Lab, and more importantly where you will pick up one of the three starter Pokemon of the Neos region. The starters available for all new trainers are as followed, being Twigaby, Charwool, and Agwaki. Twigaby is labeled as the cool starter, giving off similar vibes to Snivy or Trico, usually seen hopping around. But it comes into its own with this evolution of Hop Plant and gains the fighting typing, and usually spends most of its time training alone to become stronger. And that hard work pays off with this final evolution of Shrubaru. Known for its brawlic fighting style and powerful tail, it's a great Pokemon to add onto your team. Next is Charwool, known for its golden-like wool and its love for chocolate, labeled as the lucky starter for those who pick it up. It then evolves into Bobblaze, who reinforces its wool to become more dense, turning it into a red color. This represents a tougher coat, which will help boost its defenses. Then finally protecting everyone with its royal appearance is Ramjestic, now a fire and steel type. Between its high firepower and tough steel defenses, it's a key member for any team. Lastly is Agwaki, a speedy and spunky monkey that now completes the real monkey trio alongside Chimchar and Grookey, and carries the water and electric typing to be more unique. Though the traits of speed and aquatic ability only increase with its evolution of Wadaki, becoming even faster. Then finally, Babble, one of the fastest Pokemon in the region. Babble's punches are so powerful it sounds like thunder on impact, making it a powerful choice for any team. Once you've obtained your starter Pokemon, you're given Pokeballs and a brand new Pokedex. From there, you're welcome to head back onto Route 1 to catch some new Pokemon. Like in every region, you have a rodent or normal-like Pokemon such as Rattata, Squavit, or Lechonk. Early birds like Pidgey, Rookadee, and Fletchling. Not to mention doggos like Rockruff, Lillipup, and Poochiena. And we cannot forget about the bugs like Caterpie, Wormpole, and Tarantula. Of course, Neos introduces new Pokemon for each segment, starting off with the rodent of the region, Mushroom. Mushroom is a normal and poison raccoon Pokemon that's known for its stinky odor and thievery, though it mainly steals food for its boss in evolution being Grifungi, who is known for chowing down all kinds of food and smelling even worse, but having a powerful tail. As for the regional bird, we have Swift Chirp, a pure flying type Pokemon. It stare unnerves tons of Pokemon and people, and will peck those it deems pretty weak. Not to mention it carries a rivalry with Rookadee over food. And as it evolves into Avasaur, it gains the dark typing. It continues the rivalry with Corviknight as they fight over flight and food territories. Then for the regional doggo, you have Pup Dug, a normal and ground type that loves to dig. Like, that's literally it. That even carries over into its evolution, Turfund, which is known for its incredible nose and can dig up to 100 times its own weight. For early route bugs, you can easily find Storabug, a transparent, fragile bug Pokemon, which becomes stronger in its evolution of Stockoon, which has a tough upper half that protects its fragile lower half. From there, you get Toxkeedle and it gains the poison typing. And just like with Beedrill, be careful because it does not like to be messed with. There is another bug Pokemon you can grab, but it's a bit rare, usually found on routes 2 and 4 just past Toto Town. This small town is something similar to a Cumulate Town, where you can find interesting people alongside some shops and markets. Once on the route, you can possibly find Terra Urk. This Pokemon is unique due to having a split evolution based on its personality or nature, which is very similar to Toxel when turning into Toxtricity. So you'll have two options, one being Grantis, a bug and fighting type, which is inspired by Mantis Kung Fu and loves fighting Pokemon like Hitmontop, Machamp, and Sock. 
On the opposite end, you have Reapdis, a bug and dart type Pokemon that battles with its sharp arm mandibles, usually seen training with other Pokemon like Scyther, Kabutops, and Garchomp. Just past Route 2, you'll come into Vibrio City, a nice city known for its amazing art and art museum. It will also be the home of the first gym. And just past Route 4, you'll have Centra City, more of an old fashioned town, which holds the largest Pokemon library in the world and is home to another gym. Up on Route 3, you'll come into an interesting forest, which will hold Pokemon like Scyther, Pikachu, Snover, and Deerling. Though Deerling is a familiar Pokemon, it comes with a new addition of Sawsbuck, this one known as the Aquos form, gaining the water typing and evolving during the rain. Additionally, in Neos, all the Sawsbuck forms adopt an additional typing of ground, fairy, and ice alongside grass and the new water typing. Though also on this route before hitting the potential colder climates, you'll be introduced into new grass type Pokemon of Citrup and Tattle. Now quickly, Citrup is an adorable fruit bat Pokemon, sporting a grass and flying type, and is a great choice for those who didn't choose the grass starter or regional bird. It does evolve into Citramori, a larger fruit bat Pokemon that can secrete citric acid into its fangs. On the other hand, or land, you have Tattle, which is like the Oddish or Badoo of the Neos region and sports the grass and ground typing. And of course, it carries the same typing throughout the entire line with the middle stage of Tatini and the final stage of Tatilda. This whole line is actually inspired by potatoes, which are very popular in Black Clover. Once past the route, you're introduced to the cold but beautiful Wintry City, welcoming in very soft snow, intense mountain peaks, and the popular Wintry Skating Center. Not to mention, it also has another gym here. Though within this area, you'll gain access to Frost Tree Forest and the Frosted Cave, which will hold new Pokemon like Sandshrew, Sneasel, Absol, and Vanillish in the area, among the new Pokemon as well. As here in Frost Tree Forest, a snow covered forest, you'll find new Pokemon like Shivery, Neonian Wooper, Neonian Mawile, and Neonian Puchiena. Shivery is a newly discovered normal and ice type Pokemon, known for its shy demeanor and quiet personality, which is why some trainers tend not to catch it. But that all changes as Shivery does evolve into two different options. One choice is Frenetti, a fighting and ice type Yeti Pokemon, known for its caring personality and overwhelming strength, and it evolves via high friendship. Though the other choice is Scafrosion, a newly discovered poison and ice type Pokemon, said to be temperamental and very dangerous due to having poisonous claws and this will evolve by having Shivery eat a black sludge. There's also Neonia Wooper in these parts and has now adopted the ice and ghost typing and is said to be a living snowball, though it does take on a slightly new evolution with Snow Sire, which gives off more of a snowman vibe and loves to play with kids and other travelers. Then there's Neonia Mawile, known for lurking within the darker sections of the forest, only announcing itself if needed. Though be careful, it is an ice and steel type and carries around an ice dagger. Lastly in the forest is Puchiena, now a fully fledged ice type Pokemon is adjusted to its surrounding of the colder weather. This is fully realized in its evolution of Glaciena, said to be a rival to another Mightyena evolution in this region and Obstagoon as well. Next to Frost Tree Forest, you have Frosted Cave, a small ice crystal cave which holds familiar Pokemon like Golbat, Jinx, Bergmite, and more, including the new Pokemon of Stoatzip and Neonian Cubchoo. Stoatzip is a cute ice and electric stoat Pokemon that enjoys sliding and zipping around the ice cave floors. Though its evolution, Stoat Shot takes more of a protective role, protecting all the Stoatzip within the cave. As for Cub Chew, it dons the new fire and ice typing. Though adorable, it keeps a consistent runny nose. But keep in mind that its temper increases when it evolves into Beartic and becomes even more parental and uncontrollable. After Wintry City, you'll push onto Route 5, simple grasslands with some areas of high grass. Here you can find Quill Surge and Astrozap, being the electric and electric and psychic type Pokemon once evolving, meant to be this region's Lucario or Zorark. In this area, you can also find the Temperamental Squirt Piper, a new fire and grass type Pokemon. Once across the bridge, you'll have access to Hino Village, a small Japanese village with a Johto and Kitakami influence. Though, once on Route 6, you'll be able to find rare Pokemon that embrace the drier and more desert-like areas, such as Matriena, Meowth, Honedge, and the rare Neonian Tauros. Now, Matriena is a new evolution of Mightyena that is set apart from Neonian Poochiena. Let's just get that clear. This Pokemon evolves by holding a soft sand to a Mightyena and is only female exclusive. As for Meowth, it now takes on a fighting typing inspired by Cat Karate. And this of course transfers over into its evolution of Persian. 
Neonian Honedge is a bit different, now being a normal and steel type, but keeps the evolutions of Dub Blade and Aegislash. Though to a special item from Kitakami, it can now evolve into Kuro Slash instead of Aegislash, which will become a Dragon and Steel type. Lastly is the rare Tauros, now embracing the Dark and Fighting typing. With its beefed up muscles and plated armor, it's almost unstoppable. Now from Route 6 you have 3 options to choose from to take your adventure next, as you can head over to Heap Town, which is something similar to Lentimus Town, being a bit more rustic and earthy. Or you can opt to go over to the water and head over to Ultimate Island. Once on the island you'll notice that this is a pretty active location, due to being home of one of the legendary Pokemon of the region. Notice that it is quite rocky and very hot on the island. There will be a ton of rock, ground and fire Pokemon here, like Onyx, Karkul, Torkoal, and even Charmander. But more importantly the new fire type Pokemon, Fue Cub, a fierce flame Pokemon that is all about becoming powerful and trains from birth though it gives trainers two options. Like the combative Infernus that dons the fiery fist of fire and fighting type, or the flame soul Pokemon that embraces the power of its typing of fire and fairy. Now there is another option from Route 6 and that is heading over to Lucid City, a city known for its rocky hills, widespread mountains that surrounds the city from the coast alongside containing another gym. Now towards the back of the city you'll have access to Seti Cave, which will house some brand new Pokemon either outside or inside the cave. On the outside you'll find the brand new elephant Pokemon of Gemfan and Christodon, both being a ground and rock type. Alongside Armatar, the new ground and fairy armadillo Pokemon that plays sweet melodies. Or how about Horachu, the Pikachu clone of the region, being an electric and ground type. Lastly is Eclip Mood, a completion of the trio of Soul Rock and Lunatone, while keeping traits of Minior, and just like Minior, it can use its shield's down form to access the brand new typing of Fire and Ice for it. As for inside the cave, you have more Pokemon like Golbat and Dugtrio, you know, standard cave Pokemon, but you can also catch Shrulin, an interesting poison and psychic type Pokemon that uses psychedelic hypnosis, so don't stare at it. After Lucid City, you can head onto Route 7 and then head over to Hedge Hills. This is a section where you have a route and some grassy hills with some mountainous sections. Through here you can catch some interesting Pokemon like Go-Goat, Spinda, and Altaria. Through the route in the hills you can find the pseudo-legendary of the region being Ignori, which of course has the evolution of Tempesti, both being a dragon type and also being the blind drake Pokemon. That of course is before it turns into Ragnara, which then gains the electric typing, being a full-fledged dragon pseudo-legendary that is super powerful. There is also a rare chance to catch Pixie P, a brand new grass and fairy type Pokemon, and is absolutely loved by those who do contests. Right on the edge of Hedge Hills you enter Hedwig Town, a larger town known for its large flower gardens, sweet aroma, and giant maze, and is a holder of another gym. Onwards to Route 8 you'll be introduced to new Pokemon, like Neonian Plusle and Minin, which gains the Electric and Fairy typing for Plusle, and Electric and Dark for Minin. Also alongside the rare chance to find the Neonian Drampa, which is now a Dragon and Poison type. From there, push forward on to Witchrin Forest, an eerie area of the region that has many tales and is the holder of the Wedge Graveyard as well. Though despite all of that, at times at night it can be very beautiful, something similar to Balulia and Galar. Throughout the forest you can find and catch those of Hoot Hoot and evolve it into its brand new evolution of Gao. But you can also find Icecue's regional form of Saiskew, not to mention Neonian Stunfisk, Skitty, and the newest addition of Zoroa. Now Neonia Zorua is the rarest out of the bunch, and when evolving it into a Zorua arc it becomes even stronger, and is a brand new grass and ghost typing, not to mention seems to be the root of most of the tales that happens in the forest. Now past the forest you'll enter Witchrin City, a small city all of its own with tranquil lights and lanterns, and is actually currently home of another gym you can take on. As you embark into Route 9 right outside of Witchrin City you'll be given a chance to grab one of the new Mimikyu Trio inspired by the Sinnoh starters. You may even find Neonian Helioptile in this evolution of Corpolisk, which is a pretty scary Pokemon on its own. Though soon enough you'll come up onto Bravern City, being the second largest city in Neos and known for its warm glow and hardworking people. It's also home to the CRH, the Calamity Relief Headquarters, which is a place for those who got affected by the Calamity because of the Darkest Day, alongside being the home of the last gym in Neos that you'll take on. Though push onwards because you have the last route of the region, being Route 10 which will have a mixture of grassy plains and some rocky mountain land, allowing some unique Pokemon to be nearby. 
you'll see Medichan, Gabite, Gyarados, and many other powerful Pokemon, including the rare Neonian Growlithe, which is now a water type, but can evolve into Arcanine via the Firestone, even seeming more legendary than the original Pokemon. As well as you can possibly have the chance to catch Silver Sky, a very royal steel and flying type Pokemon. Continuing onto your path will lead you into Aria City, a pretty mainline city that is busy with hardworking business types, factories, and the official airport of the region, which of course allows those to come and go as needed. Plus, Aria also holds another gem within it. This then lastly leads you into the biggest city by far within Neos, being Royale City, the proud capital of the Neos region, the ultimate stronghold if needed. Modeled after a blend of Castelia City and the Clover Kingdom capital, with a blend of metro skylines, holographic displays, parks, and many stores as well. Royale City is also home to the Neos Pokemon League, and the headquarters to Neotech Enterprise, which is ran by CEO Alric. Now this is a brand new company that specializes in cutting edge technology with energy generation and optimization. It'll be something to explain in a later video. Also surrounding the city is a section of water that leads to the mainland of water. So within Royale City and at times closer to Ultimate Island, you can find new water Pokemon. As there is Orca B, the water flip Pokemon, and its evolution Orca Psych, being a water and water psychic type Pokemon respectively. Then there is also Goldra, the new water and dragon type Pokemon that can change its form, either by gaining a deep sea scale, which can access its water cradle form, which boosts up its defenses, or possibly by grabbing up a deep sea tooth, which will give it more swift movements with its water roar form though that just leaves one area left to have some Pokemon you could potentially add onto your team, and one of the areas we haven't explored being Elysia Forest, which is right by your home. Elysia Forest is a very magical and glowy forest, known for its white and light colored flowers and gentle breeze that comes through from time to time. It does welcome familiar Pokemon like Clefairy, Jigglypuff, Tandem Mouse, Weezing, Lopunny, and more. But more importantly, it invites brand new Pokemon that you can catch. First would be Canvart, a new normal and ghost type Pokemon based around art. Then there's Kid Stitch, an amalgamation Pokemon created from different bunny Pokemon from around the region. Alongside its evolution Hair Freak, that shares the same fate and is also a normal and ghost type. Then there is the young protectors of the forest, being Falisco, an adorable little horse type Pokemon that is a pure fairy type. Though it becomes even more protective when it evolves into Centibrawl, now officially being a fairy and fighting type. And lastly is a brand new but very rare fairy and dragon type Pokemon being Drawarf. And don't forget about its evolution, Dragastella, which is even more amazing and some think that it actually came from the stars. And just like that, that's all the major locations and some of the Pokemon within them. Though there is some Pokemon that I left out that did receive brand new forms or evolutions, so you'll have access to those as well, so let's run through those really quickly. First up is Neonian Rose Raid, which is now a Grass and Steel type Pokemon that battles with a Thorn Whip. Just level up Roselia with a Metal Coat. Next is Chatot, which has a brand new evolution of Kahono, which is possible if your Chatot levels up while knowing a Fairy type move. I recommend Disarming Voice. Then there's Dunsparce, who got a weird evolution in Paldea with the Dunsparce, but this makes up for it here with Wormsparce. Now evolving with the help of a Dragon Scale and turning into a Normal and Dragon type. Even Rotom gets access to a new form, the Battle Drone form, which is now an Electric and Steel type. And yes, it still has a Levitate. Next is Gardenvor, which is now a Water and Fairy type, and it helps protect the seas alongside the legendary Pokemon. Also, there's Rockruff, which now gains the Rock and Ghost typing. I think it's super overdue, but it will also evolve into Lycan Rock Midnight form only, and is right now only exclusive to your rival. Also, at some point in the story, you'll be gifted an Eevee that you can take onto your adventure with you that gives you access to the Eeveelutions alongside two new ones, either being the fighting type Chakrion or the dragon type Waverion, evolving respectively with a black belt while leveling or by learning a dragon type move and leveling up. There is also a special Pokeball Pokemon, being Poriball, a new Pokemon that can be found within the labs of Neotech and was created by Colrus. Though as you travel the region of Neos, you'll meet the mascot of the region being Spookid, a pure dark type Pokemon that will follow you around for a large portion of the journey before joining your team. With the help of some items, you can have access to its five other forms, so quickly let's go over those. First one being Slotocast, a dark and steel type Pokemon inspired by Clovers. Second is Galvacast, a dark and electric type speedy panther Pokemon inspired by Diamonds. 
Third is Gimokast, a dark and ghost canine heart Pokemon. Fourth is Walgacast, a dark and fighting type inspired by spades. And lastly is Lebicast, a dark and fairy harmonious Pokemon that is sort of a balance of all the other forms. Now we're almost wrapped up as we have to actually talk about the legendaries and where you can meet them in the region. Now quickly if you travel back to your home later in your journey you'll gain access to Lake Vamp, which will be home and the origin of Serene, the brand new water and psychic legendary. Then between Frost Tree Forest and Frosted Cave you can find the newest horse legendary Carostriere, and does don the typing of Poison and Steel. Not to mention it does complete the trio alongside Galastriere and Spectriere. Then next is Ultimate Island that houses an active volcano which contains the legendary Pokemon Pyroneer. Again being similar to another Hisui Island being Fire Spit Island but a bit more rocky. By heading back over to the west side of the region over to Ariate Fields you'll actually find a large golden tree and you can find several Yggdria surrounding this area. And this new legendary is a grass and fairy type. Then there's Sylphora, a brand new flying and fairy type legendary, but it does roam around something similar to Suicune in Johto, so you'll just have to catch it. Then of course through events of the story you'll be able to meet Calyrex in its ruler form and Planova, the main legendary and adversary of the entire region. Oh and there's also a Turnitus in here somewhere, but again that ties in with the story so I won't go into that too much here. Ooh, now that wraps up all the Pokemon within the Neos region, plus some additional details on the map. But don't worry, I know I skipped over a few things, but we'll dive even deeper into the map when we meet all the impeccable 8 gym leaders of the region, alongside some other characters too. Again, be sure to let me know your full team in the comments down below, or create your full team with the resources I put with the link in the description down below. I really want to see what Pokemon you guys have actually meshed together, and also remember that there is tons of older Pokemon, so even mixing some old Pokemon with new Pokemon, let me see those teams. And just be sure to tag me over on Instagram, Twitter, or Discord so I can show them off in a future video. This is really my passion project so I cannot wait to share more with you guys because something bigger is coming very soon. So be sure to subscribe for more content just like this, like up the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and uh, bye!